You guys know how we did alcohol? How do we make alcohol? Ferment what? Wheat. Sugars or fats? Sugars. Sugars. We ferment sugars. This is the reason why diabetics shouldn't drink booze. If they want to drink booze, they you know might as well get a big old bottle of maple syrup and glug 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 glug. Because as soon as they drink it, the liver metabolizes it, turns it right back into sugars. Okay. Everybody get that one? Right. Yes, no, maybe? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Got it? Okay. Yes, thank you. Energy balance occurs when the energy intake equals the energy expenditure. All right? Energy expenditure is de determined by how much activity we've had. If I'm sitting on my butt, reading on Amazon or shopping on Amazon, I'm eating chocolate bonbons, do I really need 2,000 kcals? No. Oh, not a day. All right? The average adult, about 2, 1,800 to 2,000, okay? And if you want to lose weight, I'm going to tell you right now, go put yourself on an 1,800 ADA diet. And keep up your level of activity. You'll drop weight like nobody's business. All right? Simply because you get rid of concentrated speeds. Do, does a, does a woman's caloric intake need to go up if she's pregnant? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, why? Because the baby needs it. What about lactation? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Why? We're yeah, we're feeding the kid. You've got to up the calories. Usually about 800 in the last trimester, and another all the way up to 2,100 during full lactation. Carbs. Oh, I love carbs. You guys like carbs? Mm -hmm. I love carbs. They I just don't like me. Two main types of carbs, sugars and starches. If you ever see a word that ends with O-S-E, <coughs> it is a sugar. Glucose. Fructose. Fructose. Lactose. Okay? Complex carbs include starch and non-starches. Starch are usually potatoes, rice, beans, bread. All right? Fiber is a form of carbohydrates that's only found in plant material, okay? And the reason why we love fibers is it keeps the locomotion going. It gives you the sense of fullness, okay? At least half of the energy in our diet needs to be coming from carbs. Frequently consumed foods and drinks containing non-milk intrinsic sugars can cause Increased risk of tooth decay. My older sister, she's a brilliant idiot. That woman's got an IQ of 160, but every single one of her kids, both the kids, both Chris and Courtney, never had real, honest to God, fruit juice until they were at least three. She kept cutting all the fruit juices in half with 50% water. First time I babysat the two of them, I gave them apple juice for breakfast. Courtney, Courtney was like, I can't drink this. It's too sweet. I'm like, Dad. She also was raising them on fat-free milk. So, <laughs> is that a good thing for a little one? No. no. Why do they need fat? No. 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 To grow? What am I, particularly, what am I, go down the rabbit hole. What am I wanting to grow? The bones. The bones? No, I'm saying fats. Who said it? Brains. You've got to have the cholesterol for brain development. You don't give them the 2% until like after age 5, right? Bingo. Good job. Good yeah, job. That whole new. You guys are so smart. Protein is needed for the body to repair, especially muscle, after we've burned it off. Man, this weekend when I was looking out in the yard, I was a steak fool. I was looking for hamburger meat. I was looking for steak. Right? Any of you guys ever do weight training? And you know what I'm talking about. You need the proteins to fix those micro tears. My poor little arms are still hurting. They're so bad. Okay? Proteins are made up of amino acids. All right? As com complex proteins means that they have all nine essential amino acids. Okay? I'm going to slide ahead. Incomplete proteins can be made complete proteins by what? Anybody know? Gluten. Bread. 
Peanut butter and bread. You're close, but that you're right. What kind of bread? All wheat. All wheat. Com incomplete proteins can be made complete proteins, meaning having all the amino acids by doing what? Combining them. Okay, vegans, folks that don't eat meats, have gotten really good at figuring out how to do this complex combining. Okay. Fats. Uh oh. Fats. Why do I care about fats? Well, because I got COVID 19 right here. Fat soluble vitamins. What are they? A, D, E, and K, right? Am I right? A, D, E, and K. Don't confuse, and this is what got me when I was in school. When I was doing years ago, I kept confusing vitamin K with potassium. How do you do that? Huh? I, it happened to me. So don't do it. There's two different things. Okay, vitamin K state. Vitamin K you need for what? Blood. Clotting, Clotting factors. All right, potassium. What did I teach you guys about potassium? Too high, you're going to die. Too low, you're going to die. Yeah. Too much, too little, you're going to die. All right, fats is found in meat products. We can find it in fruits, we can, or veggies, nuts, cereals. Oh. Saturated versus unsaturated fat. Saturated fats will stay solid at room temperature. Think of it that way. They're usually coming from meats. So if I take a steak and I haven't trimmed off the extra fat and I just leave it on the counter, it'll just stay there. Does that make sense? Why do I care about fats? I need it so I can store my vitamins and I, it's a source of energy, all right? We've got to have some. What's my favorite, favorite unsaturated fat? I'll give you a hint, it's a fruit. Avocado. Avocados. They're so good for you. Do you guys remember about cholesterol? How do we tell the difference between the lousy and the happy? What am I talking about? HDL and LDL. All right, HDL I want up, LDL I want down for cardiac. Vitamins, why do we need vitamins? Because you need them for enzymatic <coughs> activity. Enzymes in your body make things happen. Without the building blocks, your body can't make those enzymes. That's why we need the vitamins. Does that make sense? Different foods supply different vitamins. There is only one vitamin that you don't need from your diet. Anybody want to get it for the food? Why? Skin and foods. What makes it? Melanin. My skin. All right. I never have to worry about getting enough vitamin D unless I lived in a cave. I live in the desert southwest. All I got to do is walk out to the parking lot a few times. Whoop! I'm making vitamin D. It's all good. All right? So then, why are we really vitamin deficient, D deficient in this state if there's so many? Because we're all hiding in our buildings. Because huh? mm -hmm. it's hot outside. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Good point. Good point. Each vitamin is needed in different amounts, and every vitamin is needed in different levels as we grow older. Minerals, on the other hand, and I'm not going to quiz you on the trace minerals, all right? We need them, number one, okay, we would look really silly as ugly bags of mostly water if we didn't have our bones, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we need the minerals for, number one. We also need calcium for what? Come on guys, it's my second favorite muscle. Muscle? Oh. Heart. Heart. You gotta have for the heart, you gotta have the calcium for the heart, or the heart doesn't do what? Pump. Pump. Okay. So what's your first favorite muscle? Just eat spinach. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> my first favorite muscle is my diaphragm. He's the one that lets me breathe. All right. 
Each mineral is in different amounts. And again, those amounts we need changes over our lifetime. And then mostly, mostly water. We live on a magical planet. And my, my uh, prophecy is probably in the next 50 years, fresh water is gonna be more important than gasoline. All right? Having access to clean, fresh water. How much water are we supposed to drink a day? What, two liters? Water, not coffee, not soda pop, water. Eight glasses of water. Eight glasses of water. Do any of us can eat it? <laughs> I drink mine after it's been filtered through the, ma the magic powder of the bean. Nurses are the worst ones. We are. <laughs> we are. I was just talking to Dr. Eric about that. I said, why are we so worried about everybody else when we won't take care of ourselves? I've got to go back and reread that article I wrote about care for the caregiver. <laughs> All right, you've got to have the water. Number one, you need it for the body's activities. In order to have a metabolism that's healthy, you need the water to do the chemical processes. All right, number two, you need it for the lubrication. So everything in your body works. Number three, you need it to get rid of the toxins. Does that make sense? Y'all with me? All right, so we need to talk about the healthy plate. Any of you guys old enough to remember the food pyramid? Mm -hmm. I hated that thing. I thought that was the goofiest thing in the world. All right, my plate. My plate. <coughs> Marco's dead. You can always tell when it's the end of the semester. My Marco's all start dying. Is there another one up there? No? Oh, yeah, there's. Is there? I hope so. My mark, my mark, you keep that. Ha! Ha! Let's see if I can remember how to draw this plate. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> That's how your plate should be. Over a half of your plate needs to be fresh fruits and vegetables. Vegetables. Veggies are good for you. The reason why my garden is like, shh, that shit get back. A quarter of it, or just under a quarter of it, needs to be proteins. About a third of it needs to be carbs, and they need to be complex carbs. All right, not the Coca-Colas. All right, not the candy bars. And then the fats need to be the good types of fats. <clears throat> you think there might be stuff that influences our ability to get our hands on good food? Yeah. Like what? Low low what? Low economic status? Yeah, it's a lot cheaper to buy five ramens for a buck mm -hmm. and just, spend that buck on a head of good lettuce, right? Just convenient, having it by us instead of having a Walmart, it would be nice to have a Whole Foods. The farmer's market in the East Mountains, they only run from 3 to 6 on Wednesdays. Guess what I'm doing between 3 and 6 on Wednesdays? I'm here. I can't even get to it. That's why I grow my garden. So, does literacy play a part? Yeah. How? And they don't know how to read the ingredients in the back. Or they don't know how to read the label, the education fact label. Yep. I'm going to tell you right, huh? Lack of education. Last, lack of education, I'm going to tell you right now, my loves. If you go to the grocery store, <coughs> and you get one of these things or something like it, a container of food, and you start reading the ingredient label, uh, it, here's the rule, okay? If you can't pronounce it, you probably shouldn't stick it in your mouth. How's that for a good rule? 
Huh? You can? Water, milk, protein. I need my glasses. What's calcium cosmate? I like that redirection. <laughs> like that. Like seaweed as well. Like when I do a Smith's uh -huh. tree on my phone, uh -huh. it'll be like, you can't sell this in California. It will yeah. say that when I put it in my app. But you can buy it at Smith's here. They have the chips. They, they can't sell on in California. Yeah. In California, they'll have signs that say may cause cancer. Yeah. yeah. They have warning labels everywhere, <laughs> especially for the hot chips, and they have a blind job. They oh, walked yeah. walk, 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 the walk the walk all day trashy. They had warning labels everywhere it's about the. Yeah. yeah. And enough burgers has that may cause cancer. Is that just California? I think I've been to other countries. Other countries are more protective. Yeah. 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 Another country. Where did another one that have a warning? I don't know if it's like just higher. What would happen if I came from another country and I didn't speak English and I couldn't read those warning labels? Then we would eat. buy it. Buy it. That bag it's looks cheaper. good. I'm gonna grab it and take it home. <laughs> Maybe if I see warning signs on my kids' chips, I would speak again. <laughs> Do you know those bags of chips that they've got over here in this little vending center? You know how you know, everybody's used to grabbing them on Do me some chili Fritos, right? You know, if you flip that bag over, it says two portions in the bag. Are the little ones serving size? Mm -hmm. That's the serving size. There's two servings in one of those bags. What do you know? Like everything's chips. <laughs> All right. So, so language barriers and literacy. What else? Limited knowledge about nutrition and food safety. How many of you literally had to learn at home? No, we don't leave the shrimp or the chicken out on the counter after we fix it for a couple of hours. Why? You're going to get sick as a dog, right? I don't care what the name of the bacteria is. You just had to learn you don't do that. You're going to get sick as a dog. Even my dog knows better than to eat spoiled meat. All right? Altered or impaired intake related to culture or related to religion? Like culture, we never went out to eat when we were younger. There was always food in the house. There was always food in the house, right? Yeah. Going out to eat when I was little, that was a special that thing, was man. That was somebody's birthday yeah. or graduation. <laughs> what about related to religion? Second food for like we can't pork. Yeah, we got we got diet restrictions. You guys know that there are some faiths that literally practice the specific times of fasting. All right. We, they can't eat. They're not supposed to eat. I think it's sunrise or sunrise and sunset. They're not supposed to eat. At certain times of the year. Or not uh, just like people, they just that just do it randomly <laughs> just for like cleansing or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it can happen at any time of the year. How about social isolation? If I lived by myself, would I want to be cooking all the time? Mm -hmm. No. Eating eating is a social event. You know? And and, and I know a lot of different cultures where, oh, you came over to my house. Did you have supper? Let me feed you. That's it. I right? Isn't that what we did? We, did? Did? we, we were raised with that? I can remember going to a hospice event where I had a, a patient that had passed down in the South Valley, and I took my little social worker with me, my little social worker, big African-American kid, looked like a football player. He did not want to go down to that neighborhood. It was Friday night, about 6 o'clock at night. We're down in the South Valley. And he's like, I don't think we're supposed to be here, Ms. H. I'm like, come on. You wimp, come on. And, and they, this, this one home, this one property, had about four or five manufactured homes all shoved onto this two acre lot. And I could tell I found the right home because there were pop up tents and the food smelled amazing. I was gonna say that we eat when we're happy and we eat when we're sad. Thank you. And everybody, because this was the matriarch of the family who died. Oh yeah. Uh, at home with hospice. 
Everybody came. We had folks from Colorado. We had folks from Texas. We had folks from Mexico City, California, Phoenix. There must have been 300 people at this gathering. And he's looking at me going, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, baby, I know this is right. And this little bitty Latin grand grandchild comes up to me, and she, I'm wearing my white lab coat, and I got my step on my neck, and I got my bag. She looks at me, she goes, are you the nurse? In broken English, I said, see, I'm the nurse. Take me to Nana. Okay, she grabs my hand off. I go. We took care of Nana, did all my paperwork, did the pronouncement, and uh, I'll tell the rest of the story when we do hospice care. But uh, we're getting ready to leave, and Mark's looking at me, and he goes, man, that food smells good. That food smells so good. I said, would you eat? Are we allowed? I said, dude, if you don't eat, you just insulted this family. He goes, really? I'm like, shut up and get a plate. <laughs> he goes, did you eat? I said, honey, I had two plates. <laughs> I'm extra. I know exactly. And they, they looked at me and said, take some home. I took some home to my wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they said, oh, take it home. We got plenty. Okay, thank you. You know, it's, it is a cultural event, right? Feeding, I, I, if I love you, I feed you. You don't want to eat alone, all right? How about um, lack of adequate cooking arrangements? If I didn't have a way to cook my food, is that going to be a problem? Yeah. Name me a group in Albuquerque that can't do that. Oh, the homeless. The homeless. If I, was, if I got gifted with a couple of bazillion dollars, first thing I had to do is start putting up food. Kitchens. Where they could come and cook for themselves. Limited or low income, access to transportation. Can you guys imagine going grocery shopping and you got to get on a bus? Mm -hmm. You got two or three big old bags? I got one little grandma out in Edgewood. I see her every single afternoon while I'm driving home. She's got her little grocery cart. She's dragging behind her, coming home from Wally World. They like doing that. They like, huh? they like doing that. Yeah, and she gets the out of the house. house. So, yeah. In the South Valley, they have a lot of food that he does, like fruit market, little fruits. Please, so my grandpa, he likes to walk to the fruit market, and he goes and he gets what he needs. He gets what he home. needs, and he visits while he's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Have you guys heard of Food is Free Albuquerque? It's a project I'm part of. One of my buddies started it. What, do you guys know what gleaning means? Have you ever heard that word, gleaning? Okay. Gleaning started in, in back in Europe a zillion years ago, where the the landowner would harvest and you know pay it in taxes or store it away, and then they would let the poor come in and glean from the fields. That means whatever was left they could take. Okay? And it was free. Food is free, Albuquerque has got it set up where different homes that may have extra food after they've done their harvest. They contact my buddy. She calls up a bunch of volunteers. They all go pick. Mm -hmm. Last week, no lie guys, last week they harvested 300 pounds of apricots and dispersed them to different food banks in Albuquerque. So in the South Valley, there's the first choice there and they have a farm. So they're trying to like create um, better um, food for like the people who live in the South Valley. So if you go and like you help in the farm, they let you take home whatever you want. But that, they have a lot of resources in the South Valley um, for um, vegetables and things like that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. They're opening up a lot of um, gardening, like homeless gardens. There's like community gardens in the, like, well, in the war zone. Um, I'm not good. <laughs> in the world, I'll say it. But right in the war zone area, but in these places, they have coffee in the morning for these people, and they're giving them food, as well as allowing them to help with the harvest. And they're like popping up everywhere. I've been seeing them everywhere. Another thing my buddy does with Food is Free is she also has a seed share two or three times a year where everybody comes in and shares vegetable seeds or plant seeds or flower seeds. And this was the first year I even participate because I was just working. <coughs> but it's it's just a, it's a free giveaway of all the of all the different seeds you could use or not use, and it's really cool because I 
when I get my extra seed, I always give them out as Christmas gifts. That's something I put in my Christmas cards, as I put heirloom seeds in the Christmas cards to my family and friends. What about advanced age, or lack of, or extreme physical activity? Is that going to make a difference in somebody's ability to feed themselves? Very much. They go to like TV dinners a lot. I that's mainly what I. Their family would have me feed them. I had I had patients that lived on these because they were just easier. Sure. It was so much easier to eat, either grab a frozen meal. Or can something easier. I guess culture doesn't like that because we've never really had stuff like that. Like my mom would always put like fresh beans and like she's like, as long as we have beans and I can make tortillas at home, we have everything. So it's like <laughs> I've never heard of like TV dinners and stuff like that. How about tobacco and recreational drugs? How about somebody boozing it up? Oh, yeah, they, don't oh, yeah. they don't eat, do they? No. No, because they'd rather spend the money recreational on drugs, like this. I'll say recreational. Okay, no, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Which is legal now, yeah, unless yeah. you're a nurse. Oh. <clears throat> but what about what about somebody shooting up mm -hmm. or losing it up? Are they going to make wise decisions when it comes to food? No, no, because they'd much it. rather go <laughs> and drink it down. That's why we always have to give them a banana bag when they come in the hospital, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, limited use or knowledge of community resources. I know a lot of seniors. And I know a lot of young folks who don't know what's available out there. Okay? All right. Good, good talk. Good talk. All right. Do lab values suggest a nutritional problem? What's the number one lab value that tells me you are protein deficient? Protein. Mm -hmm. Protein. Protein. I love it. I love it. Y'all know that. What do they look like when they have malnutrition? Are they going to have a hair and skin problem? Yes. Are they going to have delayed wound healing? Yes. Are they going to have thin appearance? Yes. We've got a faculty member here. I don't know whether she's been doing it on purpose or not, but damn, she's dropped about 50 pounds in six months. I give her a hug now. I feel like she's like, oh, my damn, I'm going to break you. I'm hoping she's doing it intentionally. Muscle wasting, weakened hand grasp, abnormal heart rhythm and blood pressure, loss of balance and coordination, enlarged liver or spleen, all things you can see. All right, we're going to flip channels here. What's the difference? Because I really did have a professor who talked like that. Between paraenteral and enteral nutrition. Oh my God, did I just use a phrase you guys don't know yet? Oh, I almost used the disinfectant on the wall. That would have been bad. I used it to clean up this morning. That's why it's not. There's one in the mouth and one not. No, it's not. That's for the... You clean everything with You get bonus points for trying. We're going to work it backwards. Enteral nutrition means I use the gut. I use the gut. What am I describing? An NG tube, a feeding tube, or a peg tube. Does that make sense? So why would, why would they need this? Not nutrition. Decrease nutrition. What's another reason? <laughs> They're sedated. That's a good one. No swallow. So this is a feeding tube. Paraenteral would mean what then? You're close. You're close. Maybe true. This is IV. Oh, like TPN. Yeah, we go with a winter turkey dinner. Central lines only. All right. Central lines only. Pick line. E 
DJ, you do not use the little 22 in the back of the hand. You cannot use a peripheral IV for CTN and lipids. It will tear up the arm. Okay? Here's your hint. TPN. Total paraenteral nutrition. Check it out. What's lipids? Fat. Fats. You guys ever see them hanging up in the bag? It looks stark white. Like, white. Okay? Stark white. So why would a patient get paraenteral instead of enteral? The gut's not working. If the gut's not working, can I use it? No. no. They got a small bowel obstruction. They've had surgery. The gut's not working. Long-term feeding, especially on a sedated patient, may end up with paraenteral nutrition. What's in TPN? Anybody know? Sugar. Sugars. I should tell them all the time. Oh, the blood sugar. There we go. That was the risk I was going to ask about. TPN, what happens is the physician orders the nutritionist to do an evaluation on the patient. How many calories does this patient need? How many vitamins and electrolytes and blah, 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 blah. They write out this recipe and out this one. And that recipe goes down to the pharmacist, and the pharmacist mixes it up. All right, and it shows up in this giant three-liter bag. Okay, and we hang the TPN and lipids through the central line using a filter. Okay, so if I've got all those sugars in there, say it again, what do I have to worry about? Blood sugar. Blood sugar. So this patient needs to have CBGs, that blood glucose levels checked. Usually they're like cute water if they're in the hospital. If it's brand new, yeah, it's cute water. So, Risks associated with paraenteral nutrition is hyper and hypo. Well, Miss Howard, how could it go down? I'm so glad you asked me. So, pharmacy calls you up and says, I'm sorry, the TPN's running late. I haven't had a chance to mix it. So now I have to turn off the TPN. What's going to happen to Mr. Patient? Sure, he's going to tank, right? What do you think I could hang to protect that patient from severe hypoglycemia? Dextrose. Dextrose. The magic number is D10. Write it down. That's a test question. D10. If TPN is late, we use D D10. Ten percent dextrose. Now let's go back to enteral nutrition. What do I need to check before I start the fluid again? I gotta do what? Fluid overload. I gotta make sure the tube's in the right spot, mm -hmm. right? What's the gold standard? X-ray. X-ray. Good job. But. What do I need to do before I start infusing the tube feeding? Huh? Residual volume. Residuals. Very good. You have to check the residual volume. All right? I need to make sure his gut is working. Okay? So if you aspirate, everybody know what that means, right? You got to hook up a tube and or hook up a syringe and I pull some out. The magic number is less than 100. All right, there should be less than 100 remaining in the stomach before you restart food feeding. Does that help? Mm -hmm. All right, just a little bit more, and I'll give you guys a break. All right, do your ATI reviews, please. They're in there for a reason. <laughs>